go. I don't know why I'm paying a toll. It's the only way to get to uh, Texas. Yes. All right, your ACT's got you, you're good. My what? Your Harris County tag. Oh, this, the, the easy tag? Oh, cool, okay. All right, thank you. And there's a lady handing out candy. That's funny. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Oh, you have candy. Oh, yes, we have. <laughs> you're going to take a left, uh, go past the cove. You're going to see um, a little parking area um, when you go past the dump station. Okay. It's just right there on your left, and you just park there. Um, that leads back to the trout pond and uh, the primitive area okay. there. Sounds good. All right. Hello from beautiful Lake Bob Sandlin. Uh, State Park in Texas. So this is my home for the night. So I have the entire parking lot. It doesn't look like there's any primitive campers. They would be here by now, I sh I'm sure, because <laughs> I would have to hike in. Um, so yeah, so this is where I'm parking. And um, for $10, <laughs> since the entire campsite is full except for primitive. And I said, hey, as long as there's somewhere for me to park and sleep, like right here, I'm good. See? Sunset. So this is where I'm at right here and it's six o'clock and they've actually got a um, trick-or-treat thing going on up in the camping areas so we're not allowed to drive our vehicles around um, after between 6 and 8 p.m. so I think what I'm going to do is um, go do this hike up here and then I think I'm going to go down to the pond and then over to the lake so I think I'll just do this half so it's probably about maybe just over two miles and I think that's it for today. There's a whole bunch of other trails you can like loop around the roads, I think is what the old trail shows, but the actual trails are right here. So I'm gonna quickly put my very muddy hiking boots on and go do that. And I think that'll be fun. So yeah, I think I'll do, yeah, I'll start here. And then there's also the Homestead Trail, which is right across the street there. Um, but I think I'll loop around and then I'll come back, um, come back up the main road from the entrance so yeah super super tiny park super fun i probably won't see anyone with um costumes on but unless they jump out and scare the crap out of me <laughs> you know, while i'm hiking like the oklahoma park had all these like little witches and ghosts hanging from the trees i did clean out my porta potty the dump stations right over there and this is perfect perfect so yeah 64 degrees perfect weather time for a hike You'll see um, the Oklahoma hikes on a different uh, video, but I have to say, pretty proud of myself and Prudence. We are doing two hikes in two different states today. <laughs> and one of those states is like one of the largest states in the country. So one of the uh, girls in one of my hiking groups online, she's like, uh, we're talking about like states you've been to and you've stayed in, you visited. And she goes, yeah, no day trips from Texas. I was like, well, if you live in North Texas or like North of Dallas, you can like go over to, you know, Oklahoma and Arkansas pretty easily. Or like me, drive all night <laughs> and uh, go from Houston. Okay, so this one is um, 1.7 miles to about 0.6 miles. 
and then I'll see how I feel. I have Wi-Fi here, so I'm going to I'm going to chill out and relax. I haven't had a lot of sleep in the last couple of days because of the driving and things like that. So uh, a lot of late uh, driving nights. Um, so I'm going to get back probably about eight o'clock, a little bit before eight and uh, just chill out and watch Netflix and YouTube. So the weekends are when all the people I follow um, do their videos. So I've been finding new people and dropping off of the old people. Um, I kind of like, once their channels kind of get all over the place, I think you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> um, uh, it's just kind of hard to watch and I don't really need like how to go on a plane or how to eat at an airport or wait at an airport lounge travel advice. Pretty okay with that. I'm more interested in just like the blogging type um, channels where it's just the people living their life. Um, I don't really need to be taught how to travel. <laughs> Although my, my, you know, channel is just kind of like I'm just basically hiking and biking and showing you how to do it um, but not like you know how to take how to book a plane ticket I don't need to do any of that stuff so this will be like I don't know I did eight miles earlier this will be probably 12 miles two different states two different uh, hikes um, in one day so pretty busy day but I, I'm pretty pretty tough anyway just babbling okay let's uh let's hike to the trout pond <laughs> I tried fishing one time off a boat in the ocean. It was so hard. I was like, this is not fun anymore. <laughs> so, okay. An important hack, like a really important hack if you're in van life and you call a campsite or you go to a campsite and there's nothing available, ask them for the primitive camping area um, usually it's hike in and uh, you have to park somewhere else well if you're in the van you can just park where you have to park and nobody cares if you actually hike in with a tent and all your equipment um, but this would have been my spot actually this is the yeah this is spot number one and this would have been my spot which is actually very, very nice. And I do miss tent camping and I'm right by the toilet. Um, I do miss tent camping a lot, actually. Um, that's what I did all of 2020 with my SUV and my mountain bike. Um, but building the van and being in the van, it just enables me to carry more equipment and just be a little bit more secure and be able to stay in more places. Um, you know, basically get in later, uh, get up earlier and not have to pack up all my stuff. So there are benefits, but I would like to go on a proper backpacking um hiking trip where i you know hike for a couple miles and you know go get all that like fancy ultralight equipment <laughs> um i do have an osprey bag that i got like 90 percent off it was like super on sale from like backcountry or something and um it's really beautiful it's got like a um, back frame like metal frame in it and everything it's like a 60 liter or 40 liter or something i think it's 60 liters um but it's perfect but i don't have any other equipment for the actual backpacking stuff um i do want to do bike packing um if i get a much more decent bike not one that i just you know throw around toss around um i do want to um do some tent camping you know eventually again um but i do you know i do enjoy uh the van i think what i would do is i'd prefer to you know have the van and then go do like a three-day hiking backpacking trip you know with the van but like leave the van somewhere and go like hike into the mountains um so that's all like you know next year and stuff i don't know um i'm kind of inspired to like drive to alaska now so i don't know that'll be a couple years from now i do the whole um you know pan american highway from houston which isn't really part of the pan american highway but houston to prudhoe bay because you know prudence prudhoe bay it's only fitting that uh you know, I take her to her namesake, almost, uh, even though she's named after a Beatles song. Um, yeah, so I go to Prudhoe Bay, and then uh, the idea is that I, um, you know, drive back down through, like, just kind of hightail it up there, and then take my way getting back. Um, once I get to Seattle, go the actual Pan American Highway down through California. Hopefully by then, a couple years, gas prices won't be $7 a gallon. Um, but that's kind of the plan, and that way I'll go to Alaska for the first time. And also um, one of the uh, states that I'll go to in the, in the van. So 
Um, and I think there's like six national parks, five national parks there, but only like four are actually accessible. Um, so I don't know. That's just an idea. <laughs> A lot of people are like doing that now. So, um, but then also ex like explore British Columbia, which I've never really had a chance to do. I've been to Vancouver, but I haven't been able to go really anywhere else in Canada. I've been to the East Coast, uh, Quebec, Montreal, uh, Quebec City, Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto. Um, but I've never been to Nova Scotia. I almost did like a semester there with our sister college when I was in college, but um, never done that and never um, really explored any really, you know, big parts of Canada. And I have a minor degree in Canadian studies, so I should like, you know, actually go see if what I learned is true. Um, so that's the plan. Um, you know, just kind of figuring out once I've almost finished all of the southern states. Um, and I've done a few states, visited a few states multiple times um, just because it's accessible straight from Texas. Um, but I would like to figure out my original plan of this year was to, you know, slowly get the van up north, find somewhere to store it. And then when I have vacation time, fly into that place and then take the van to explore, you know, the northern states and, and everything north of Colorado and like more of Utah and Wyoming and that kind of thing. Um, but that plan kind of got changed because I had some opportunities to go to Colorado and uh, Tennessee and those places uh, this year, which was definitely well worth it. I'm really happy that I did those trips. The Atlanta, uh, Georgia, Smoky Mountains, Tennessee trip was postponed from last year. So I was very eager to do that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the plan. I just have to figure out like if that's feasible. Um, I could take the van to Albuquerque and leave it at the airport there in the RV parking, which is right near the gravel lot that I park at for free. Um, but of course it's paid parking. Or I could find somebody, you know, that would be generous to lend me a driveway for a few months so I can leave my van, you know, not all the way at the bottom of Texas. So we'll figure it out. It'll just be more now that people can fly and it's not so hectic with all the rules and regulations, it's a little bit more back to normal. Um, flying would be back to being enjoyable for me, which it generally, you know, hasn't been too enjoyable. So, you know, I've just been driving rather than flying which is great because I flew hundreds and hundreds of times in my life all over the world and it was nice to, you know, take some time to drive. So we'll figure it out. Um, so this hike is super short, um, really pretty. Um, but yeah, the, the hack is, um, you know, if they're booked on the, the campsites and you don't need to actually like have a hookup, you have fully self-contained cargo van, a school bus, ambulance, um, just ask them for a primitive site. And that way you've paid to stay in the park overnight and you can park pretty much at any, you know, parking lot. Um, so that's kind of the, you know, that way you've paid and you can stay and you just sleep in your van and it's cheaper. You know, it's only $10 for me to stay tonight. Um, so this whole weekend for accommodation has pretty much just been $10. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, three nights, $10, uh, you know, van life is expensive when you first start to build your van but once you start traveling you start offsetting the cost because I do not need to pay for hotels I do not need to pay you know to go out eat out at restaurants and all the activities I do are pretty much free because I have a Texas State Park Pass and the parks in Oklahoma are free you just pay for parking so oh no $20 I paid for $10 parking today so $20 for the whole day and one tank of gas so you're looking at about 60 bucks and great. Okay, which way do I go now? So my hike has turned into a night hike, which is awesome. I should probably start getting used to these because daylight savings is going to bump us back even earlier. It's only 6.45 p.m. and it's almost completely dark. So this is really nice. Okay, going around, looping back, taking a little bit of the road and calling it a night. Good 
morning from a very desolate, I don't even know what town I'm in, somewhere in Texas. I think it's Dangerfield. Anyway, so yeah, I'm pretty much the only person. And I found this really cool thing I'm gonna go take, take a look at quickly. It looks like it's free. It doesn't look like anything else is like open that you can actually pay for here. I have no idea what this is. This is the alley. Oh, I'm in Pittsburgh, Texas. Texas has a habit of stealing names from other places. What is this place? This is so scary. Oh my God. This smells like spray paint. Literally the whole thing <laughs> smells like spray paint. This is terrifying. What is this? I'm like the only person in this town right now. <laughs> so, I guess you can, I don't know. This is bizarre. <laughs> This is like mildly terrifying. Okay. I guess this is a uh, haunted house or something. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> That's a big uh, no for me. Uh, trick or treat. I think I'm just going to leave. <laughs> All right. That was scary. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, so a lot of these towns, you know, they have your usual bistro, antique shop, pickup truck, uh, local newspaper, post office, and that's about it, really. A lot of antique shops here. Okay, let's go. from a very rainy and soggy Dangerfield State Park. So I'm going to do a, I think, four mile hike. Um, the rain is fine. Rain's my favorite weather. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I'll do a quick four mile hike and then I need to get to Tyler State Park before 1 p.m. because I have a morning pass um, to go there and then I'll just mountain bike. Once I'm in the park, I can stay all day. I'm just on a mountain bike um, and then head to one more state park if I have time and then back to Houston. So I was supposed to be here last night, but I got a little bit delayed because of that fog. So I'm here right at 8 p.m. and the ranger is still setting up. By the way, if you're wondering, maybe you're not, but if you're wondering what these little sachets are, these little packets, these are, um, uh, charcoal bags and I have probably about 20 of them or 30 of them all over the place. These little ones are for like my shoes and uh, they stop the moisture so um, I've never had condensation, I've never had mold or anything and I just put these little charcoal bags, you can get them off Amazon, a pack of six or seven and I just put them all over the van. So I was the first one here at Dangerfield State Park, parked next to a dumpster. Keep it classy, Prudence. Um, yeah, so there's a couple good parking spots. I don't know if I'll get any sun today. Um, I still have 50% power on the Bouge RV um, power bank, and I'm down to like 15% on the Jackery. So the fridge is just plugged into the Jackery. The fridge actually stays cold for a few hours after um, it, like I unplug it. So I think I'm good for two hours at least, and I have a one hour drive to Tyler State Park. There's a really pretty lake over there. One thing about Texas, I will say, is that we have really pretty lakes. And I really got into like the paddle boarding last year. Haven't done it this year. But the only thing down in Houston is that you have alligators. <laughs> so I have to come all the way up to the Panhandle or Northern Texas to go enjoy the lakes or go out to Austin. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go start the hike. There's a meadow right here. Um, it's not a very big park. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the um, Mountain View Trail do that loop and then I'm gonna do hike the Mountain View Trail and then I'm going to hike the Rustic Leaves Trail around the lake and then it comes back out to the parking lot and then that's it. So yeah, really, really pretty. I love these like small estate parks. They're great for kids and they usually have playgrounds and little camp area. So yeah, let's do it. I did a figure eight and now I'm going down this very, very steep part. It's a little wet, as you can see, 
and it's got like these um, foresty foliage. So just wear your grippy shoes. <laughs> There's this little family, little kids are like, is this hard? I'm like, it's steep. I mean, it's not hard for me, but you know, um, kids could probably do it. But yeah, this is fun. This is beautiful. I will take every ounce of mountain type elevation that I can get in Texas um, because we li literally have nothing. We have um, the second largest canyon in the country, um, but I think I'm going the wrong way. Is this the right way? I don't know. Let me check. Yes, this is the right way. So this is pretty challenging for somebody that maybe doesn't know how to hike or doesn't have grippy shoes on. So like I said, <clears throat> got my trusty map. So I did the figure eight. So I'm heading now toward the lake. It's very wet, very muddy and very slippery. So I think once I get down this part, um, yeah, once I get down this part, I think I should be fine. So I'm gonna put the phone away and use three points of contact. I just scrambled all down that and then this is the other part that I have to go down. So yeah, not too difficult. Just muddy, wet, <laughs> slippery, all that fun stuff. it took an hour and 19 minutes and this is the little pine general store and I'm pretty sure those pines are pretty big some of the biggest trees I've seen in Texas crazy okay I'm gonna check out the store and then head on <laughs> Good afternoon, I am at Tyler State Park and I'm going to ride the mountain bike trails. So it looks really nice, it's a really big park, super big, tons and tons of like camping spots and they're all full <laughs> and it's like Halloween or it's uh, Halloween Eve's Eve. Um, so I'll show you what I'm going to do. I've got my bike, I've got my gear on and it's about 65 degrees, the sun keeps peeking out but uh, this is the perfect weather so I'm going to ride, I'll show you right now. The red trail, uh, the A loop is closed. They had a massive fire. So I'm gonna do the bike, the uh, B, C and D loop. And then uh, the rest are just hiking only. And I may um, do quick loop of the park too. It's really, really pretty, really hilly. And so I'm super excited. And then here's the map here. So I should be able to get right onto the Blackjack. Uh, no, that's Blackjack Nature Trail. Um, so I should be able to get onto the Blue Trail from here. And then I think I'm going to head counterclockwise. So I'm going to go up first and around and then back. So actually, no, I think I'm going to go clockwise, not counterclockwise, because that way, if anything happens, I can get onto the road on that way. So yeah, so let's do it. I'm stopping for a minute. I was just talking to the ranger. He's looking for downed trees. There's one blocking the trail. I saw like three others. Um, this is a really pretty park. This is a really great ride. It's not eight and a half miles as all trails tells me. It's actually more like uh, more like 10 miles. Um, but I asked him, I was like, are people supposed to put their dogs on a leash here? And he's like, yeah, they're supposed to put their dogs on a leash. And I said, oh, I've seen like five people so far with no dogs on a leash. And then two really obnoxious mountain bikers on there. If you ride a $10,000 mountain bike, you don't get to like, you still have to get the right of way. So I had the right of way going up this steep bit and they just come barreling down. There's nowhere for me to go and they almost crashed into me. And then I was like, politely said, hey, you have to like, what's wrong with the sun? Let me go over here. Um, I was like, um, you have to, uh, you have to get the right of way. And they just told me to go F myself. I was like, part of my, a lot of my travel research that I do is finding places that are 
healthy and healing and safe for people with disabilities. Um, PTSD is a disability, it's a protected disability. And so if you come to a park, if you look at the park rules and you go, oh, I'm going to come to this park because dogs are leashed and, you know, um, you have to pack in, pack out your trash and, you know, the, and you go, okay, this feels like a safe space for me. And you get here and there's no dogs on leash and, you know, and a lot of it too, there's some state parks that I've been to in Texas where I'll never go back because the rangers don't even enforce their own rules because they're terrified of the patrons. And I've had some pretty bad experiences at like maybe like three or four state parks. Um, but yeah, like you're supposed to leash your dog. Your dog isn't supposed to run around on the trails in state parks. And although it might be convenient for you to let your dog run around, and I commend you as a pet parent, it's actually pretty dangerous. There's literally some places on these trails where there's nowhere for someone to move out of the way if your dog comes running at them. I don't like dogs running at me. You know, I expect on this trail to ride my bike and have people leash their dogs. If, if I'm, you know, if nobody, five different people right now not leashing their dogs, then I'm not going to come back here and ride my bike because somebody is not enforcing that. So I told the, the ranger, He's like, yeah, people, you know, we have some trouble with people. And that's the thing in Texas, people are just obnoxious and they don't follow the rules. If you have a set of road cones on a road, some guy in some lifted F-350 will just knock, like knock every single one over. That's just what they do. It's really frustrating. Um, but my thing is I, you know, even if I'm going to get obscenities yelled at me for following the rules and enforcing the rules and asking people politely, hey, do you mind leashing your dog? Or do you mind not smoking here? And, you know, you can't be burning fires. I do that because if they're, if the reaction every time from these people is going to be like harassment or something, I don't know what the word is, like they're going to not be polite. Somebody else that I, I would not recommend this place to someone else that needs to come here to heal. Yeah, the bugs are bothering me. People come to these places to, um, you know, to heal. So you have to be respectful, even if it's inconvenient for you. Trust me, somebody's physical or emotional, mental disability is far more treacherous for them to deal with than you putting a little leash on Fido. So that's my PSA. Please just be respectful. You could seriously, if some people go really far, especially in national parks. National parks are even, you, I was at Zion and somebody had their dog on the trail. You cannot take your dog up Angel's Landing. Do not take your dog, just don't, don't do it. You know, it's like, oh God, it pisses me off. But I'll, I'll speak up. I'll take one for the, for the team and the hell? <laughs> I'll take one for the team. And, you know, even if it means that I get a barrage of, you know, obscenities yelled at me, I'm like, I'm pretty bulletproof right now. Like, I'm not gonna, you know, it's not gonna ruin my day. Cause you know, I, sometimes I know it's gonna happen. I'm like, okay, if I tell this person, this person looks like they're not gonna follow the rules. And I just say it and, oh, hey, leash your dog. And then they tell me, go off myself. I'm like, if my daughter was with me, I would not be polite. <laughs> I would have some pretty choice words to say. And that's what the ranger said. He goes, yeah, if, if he was with his daughter and some dog was not leashed, he would give one warning and then <laughs> it would not be pretty after that. I'm like, I don't go to that extreme. I would just, you know, find some snarky comeback. And I have no respect for people that disrespect, you know, those with disabilities. I think that's that's pretty, pretty awful, you know, because you never know. You never know what your people you, around you are dealing with. And, you know, it's like, anyway, okay, well, I'm going to finish off. My arm is tired now from holding this phone and I'm going to go, uh, I got like a mile left, three quarters of a mile left. And then I'm back at the van. I am heading toward Purtis Creek State Park. It's the last state park for the weekend. And apparently this is the, holy crap, that's loud. This is the best barbecue in Texas. So I don't know, <laughs> I'm gonna buy some because I think at the, at the state park, sorry, it's very loud. I think what I'll do is just have picnic, which I think counts as an activity. And then I can check that off as visiting. <laughs> so I have to do something, hike, bike, mountain bike, trail run, swim, paddleboard, and have a picnic. So I'm going to get this right now and we'll see how this is. OK, 
Okay, this is what I got. Um, I have to get potatoes. I can't have the bread or like gluten right now. And I'll do another video on that. But um, so this is what I have. So I have chopped brisket, uh, turkey, um, potatoes and mashed potatoes. And then they gave me some extra barbecue sauce. So yeah, so I'll take that with me and I'll have it for my dinner when I get to the park. So this is my disheveled look after mountain biking and hiking for two whole days. Um, so I will say that although this says the best barbecue in Texas, um, the best one is still on the 10 freeway on the way to Houston, which I'm not going to be passing, which is why I'm stopping here. I think it's a tradition now when I'm ending a trip and I'm going back into Houston, I should get barbecue. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's it was expensive. It was $20 for that. Um, and. Uh, I, it smells good. I'm sure it tastes pretty good. It, barbecue never looks very good, but it also, you know, usually tastes very good. Um, but the one that's a Miss Shekers or Mikaiskas or whatever it's called on the 10 freeway I went to the other week, which is in a different video, is definitely much better. So the sun is pretty intense right now. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so yeah, so we'll stick with that as my favorite, but we'll try this one. I'm now at Pertis Creek State Park. It's another lake. Um, it's late in the day. It's already 4.30. So I think what I'm going to do is go to the other end of the park and uh, eat my dinner and then just do a quick nature trail one mile loop and then head back to Houston. This is really cool. This is a super, super quiet state park. I actually like the quieter state parks as long as they have more than five miles of mountain biking trails. Um, because like you don't get all the obnoxious people like today. But this is really beautiful. Let me close my window so it's not so loud. You know, Texas has the best state park system. It is like literally so such a well-oiled machine. I mean, look at this, how beautiful this is. And again, it's like some of the most beautiful places in the country just get like people just write them off because they're like oh you know politics you know whatever yes I know like a lot of it sucks but it's still really really freaking beautiful and I'm fortunate that you know um, I've been able to explore so much of Texas this is my 68th state park in Texas so I'd like to let's see that's one I think I'm gonna go further a little bit further it's super tiny but yeah, a lot of these little hidden gems, you know, it's like people just barrel through Texas on the 10 freeway or the 40 freeway to get to the east or the west and generally don't think there's anything to see here, but you'd be surprised. It's, it's pretty phenomenal. This is my dinner view. And, you know, when people knock van life and they go, oh, you know, how could you live in such a tiny space? Okay, but like, what's the view from your kitchen table right now? It's probably a kitchen. <laughs> my view is this. I'm going to open the door. I'm going to sit. I'm going to eat my food and uh, enjoy the uh, peacefulness. Not busy at all for a Sunday night, um, but I do have a three hour drive back to Houston after I finish my dinner. Um, there is a little nature walk over here. Uh, it's 0.8 miles up and back. So that would be like 20 minutes. So I may do that uh, just to stretch my legs. There's a bathroom. Um, this is beautiful, really beautiful. Yeah, it's like uh, my my living room, kitchen, bathroom, well, not bathroom, living room, kitchen, dining room, and sometimes bedroom view is here. <laughs> so pretty awesome.